Hi and welcome. We're going to talk about electrostatic speakers today. And my name is Paul. Let's see what we've got. This question comes from Mauricio in Pennsylvania. And he writes, can you tell us about electrostatic speakers? I know they sound super amazing, but as with electrostatic headphones, they are very delicate. True. If somebody looks to buy a set, what would they need to look for? Electrostatic speakers are probably one of the more misunderstood loudspeakers I, I can think of. I've owned a number of them from multiple models of Martin Logans to Acoustats and even a, an old pair of quads. So let me explain basically what an electrostatic speaker is and, and sort of just a general idea of how it works. Electrostatic speakers depend on high voltage to work. And essentially, they are a thin piece of, let's, let's just call it plastic. It might be mylar or any kind of plastic. Picture a, a thin sheet of conductive material that has been coated with uh, a, a type of conductive uh, surface treatment of some kind, okay? So we have plastic that's been treated with a conductive surface. Now, in very close proximity, you have two conductors, two grids, if you will, on the outside. So here it's, it makes a sandwich. So you have uh, this, this grid and this sheet and another one, and they're very close together, okay? Now, what takes place is a very high voltage, usually generated by, well, almost always generated by, by a transformer, is placed onto the conductive surface. So it, now it has a very high charge. And on the outside, these two grids, which are usually made out of like perforated metal. I know in my Martin Logans out here, we have a pair out in, on the, in the sales area. Those Martin Logans have very nice looking perforated metal uh, grids that are on the outside. There's a, a pair of them. And if you look closely, because you, you can see through Martin Logans, you can see the, you know, the uh, material in between. Using a transformer, an audio step-up transformer, because we have to have fairly high voltages. Oh, there's my little watch. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Apple. That's my wife telling me lunch is ready, I think. In any case, um, using a step-up transformer, each leg of the transformer is connected up to these outer grids. And the signal that is coming from our power amplifier uh, is used then to modulate uh, um, high voltages on, uh, relatively high voltages on uh, either side of the conductive screen. And if, if you remember, you get static electricity, very high voltage onto a balloon, and it pulls your hair. Well, that's kind of what's happening on this. So what you're trying to do is use these two grids to pull and push away the highly energized center conductor, if that makes sense. So it doesn't move much. And in fact, it can't. If it moves too much, you could get arcing between the, the much lower voltage outer screens and the very high voltage of the inner one. So you don't want to poke or touch that inner screen because it's got very high voltage on it. And, and that's basically how an electrostat works. Now, they're, they're wonderful in some respects, in many respects, actually. They are wonderful because they're very quick. You imagine that there's this very light membrane diaphragm that is moving just a little bit and so it can move very quickly and and so for high frequencies for transients there's really nothing quite like an electrostat some people say that electrostats are like listening to music through a window and uh, and very much so you can you can just hear everything going on with amazing detail bass is difficult for them trying to move a lot of air with a very uh, minute amount of movement on this diaphragm is very difficult, if not close to impossible. You have to have huge amounts of screens, like a big CLS system, 
where it'll actually make bass. But generally, if you see electrostats, they've got integrated subwoofers that are built into the bottom of the electrostat to make up for their deficiency in bass. Another problem that they have is dynamics. Because they can't move very far, you don't get a lot of dynamic range. And the, the, the last problem is that due to the way that the screens, these large screens and the, the, the well, just the, the way that they are constructed, they have a very narrow sweet spot. I know every year we go to Rocky Mountain and Roger Sanders, with, who makes a, a wonderful set of just amazing sounding speakers called Stan, Sanders Electrostats. If you look at his setup, his room has uh, one sweet spot and it's chair, 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 one behind the other. As, as Like if you went to our room, you'd see chairs spread out because we have a much larger sweet spot. Roger's room, whoosh, like this. So everybody sitting in the center has a great view. If you get off to the side a little bit, doesn't work so well. So kind of the head in the vice problem, very few dynamics, no bass, so it has to be augmented with a woofer. That said, and all those things said, what you do get, and when it works right, they're great. They are like crystal clear windows into the sound. So if that's your thing, then that's, that's a good way to go. Hope I answered your question. <laughs> Thanks for asking.